Okay, this is your second kinetics and gas laws um, notes for the night. Um, on this one, I'm just going to review real quickly. We did some research last time, and we researched some phosphine gas and some things about fumatoxin and phosphine and what was to, what was going on. Um, now we're going to go into phase diagrams. You'll need to lose, learn all parts of the phase diagram, and be able to tell me what's happening at a certain temperature and pressure. Okay, so you need to be able to interpret what's on the graph. So let's talk about a phase diagram. This is what a phase diagram looks like. And you should be able to do all parts of it. And I'm going to move this down a little bit. You will, there we go. So you can see it all. All right, so we have pressure going up the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we have temperature. We have solid in this area. We have liquid in this area. And we have gas in this area. Now between solid and liquid, most of you know that's melting and boiling. Or excuse me, melting and freezing. Melting and freezing is just like on our heat curve. Okay, so we went from solid, we mel melted and froze, we went to a liquid, and then we did boiling and condensing, and we went to a gas. So this is a different way to look at it. You'll notice that there's a different place down here that's going from a solid to a gas. We haven't talked about this before. This is known as what's called sublimation. That's like dry ice. If you leave dry ice out on the counter, it will just go right to a gas. Or deposition. That's how they make dry ice. Going right from a gas, put it enough, on enough pressure, and we make a solid. This triple point here is important because that's a point at which solid, liquid, and gas all coexist. This point coming across at one atmosphere is known when it hits this line as a normal freezing point. When it hits this line as a normal boiling point. So if I ask you for any of those, it's just going right across at one atmosphere. Where does that one atmosphere intersect those lines? So normal freezing, normal boiling. This point up here, critical point, doesn't matter how much pressure I put on past this point, everything's gas. Okay. It doesn't matter. The molecules are too excited. They're at too high of a temperature. It just doesn't matter. They're just gas. So we call this the critical point. You need to be able to pull off the graph the critical temperature and the critical pressure. Okay. So this is a phase diagram. Be able to read it. Be able to get off it what I ask you for. Okay. So if I ask you what the pressure and the temperature of the triple point, you should be able to give me that. If I ask you what the temperature of the normal freezing point or the normal boiling point, you should be able to give me that. Or if I give you a pressure and a temperature, you should be able to tell me what's happening, what state I'm in at that point. Okay. Going on to the next one. We're going to talk about gas laws. And gas laws have to do with kinetics because things move around. So there's an easy way to remember this gas law. This gas law, the ideal gas law, helps you to be able to get most of the other gas laws that there are out there. It's a little bit weird to remember, but it's, it'll stick in your head. Ideally, you're not a pervert. Okay, all right, I know. Shocking. Okay, but the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. Perv, nert. Got it? Okay, get it in your head. Let's explain what each part of this is. The ideal gas law, per inert, is where P is in pressure. In this law, you need to have it in atmospheres. Here are some conversion factors that you'll need to know. You can set it up, to, up into several different fractions. So if you know all these conversion factors, you can go back and forth and back and forth. Now, Tor is the same basically as millimeters mercury. And the reason why is Tor was a guy that, a scientist, that millimeters mercury was named after. Kilopascals is an English unit, and atmospheres is our SI unit. V, liters. You need to have volume in liters. N is the number of moles. R is a gas constant. You need to memorize it. Yes, even with the units. So 0 0.0821 atmospheres times liters divided by mole kelvin. And if you set this up, if you try to find out what the units for R are, you could see pressure and volume divided by moles and temperature. So you can get that really quickly. T, Temperature has to be in Kelvin. We have to have an absolute temperature. We can't have any negatives, and we cannot have a zero. And since we have never reached zero Kelvin, we will not have a zero in our equation. Okay? So definitions of everything in Pervnert. Now we're going to be using this law to figure out other laws. So ideally, you're not a Pervnert. Remember it. Remember it. Temperature, this is just comparing the scales, so you sort of remember what's going on. 
zero Kelvin, we haven't reached. We haven't reached negative 273 Celsius either. We've come really close, but we haven't reached it. This is a conversion factor from getting from Fahrenheit to Celsius and from Celsius to Kelvin. This should be on the back of your periodic tables, but you can double check, and if they're not there, put them. All right, always use absolute temperature, Kelvin, when working with all gases. So all the gas laws, we have to be in Kelvin. No ifs, ands, or buts. STP. When I was a little kid, we used to um, have little STP stickers that we put on our wagons. They don't have those anymore, but STP just means standard temperature and pressure. I didn't know what that was. It just was a cool sticker. So standard temperature for gases is zero degrees. Now that's different than the thermodynamics. Thermodynamics, it was 25, which was room temperature. But for gases, it's zero, okay, which is 273.15 Kelvin. Standard pressure is one atmosphere. These other in blue are our conversion factors. Remember, we want to keep it in atmospheres. All right, so the ideal gas law can be set equal to R. Remember, I told you earlier that would be the easy way to figure out what the units on R would be. So atmospheres, liters, moles, Kelvin. Okay, so if we have two sets and we're setting them equal to R, we can end up with what we call the combined gas law. P1, V1 divided by N1, T1 equals P2, V2 divided by N2, T2. That way we can set two systems equal to R and figure out if I move the pressure to here and the temperature to this, what's going to happen to the volume. I can tweak things. Okay, so this is our combined gas law. All we did was take pervnert and set it equal to R and put them next to each other. Oftentimes we leave the N out because usually we're not messing with the moles, but the moles are there. So if you need them, great. If not, if they're the same on both sides, you can cancel them out. So combining the gas laws often look, looks like this. So here's how we can get some other laws. I'm going to give you some tricks. Boils is like boiling water, boils. So you're holding temperature constant. So here is our combined gas law, but we hold temperature constant, which means we can get rid of the temperature. Whoops, let me get rid of the temperature slowly there. This is Boyle's law, so it's without temperature. And when these laws were actually found, they were found backwards, and then they found the combined gas law, and then they found pervnert. But it's easier to remember it the other way. Okay, so N is usually not there again, but it could be. Charles. Now I think about, you can see the little crown here, I think about King Charles, or Prince Charles, or whatever he is now. Okay, so he's royal, he's under a lot of pressure. See, that's why that's his hair. So, again, we take the combined gas law, but because he's under constant pressure, we can drop the P's out and we end up with Charles' law. Now, again, the N's can be there on the bottom, but they usually aren't, okay, because they're usually the same on both sides. So, that's another law, Charles. Now, don't make fun of this guy's name, Galo Sachs, but, and I say it Galo Sachs okay, or Galo sucks, because it helps me remember what's going on. So sucks has to do with volume, because if you suck, you suck in a whole bunch of volume over there, okay. So here we do our combined gas law again, or you suck up some volume of shake, that would be yummy. So volume is held constant, so volume can drop out. So here is Galo sucks law. It has to do with pressure and temperature moving. Again, N could be there, but usually we hold it off. The last one has to do, it doesn't have to do with our um, combined gas law or our pervner. This one is different, it's Graham's law. And I like to think of this as grandma's perfume law. Okay, my grandma wore a very strong perfume and we always used to joke that, you know, you could smell her coming before she got there. And you could smell if grandma had been there because her scent lingered. Okay, so it has to do with how fast things move, and we'll be doing a lab with this. So it's rate A, rate, rate of gas A divided by rate of gas B is equal to the square root of molecular mass of B, that's what we add up from the periodic table, divided by the molecular mass of A. Okay, it just compares how fast one gas is to another. So if I open up an, a, a bottle of ammonia on one side of the room and grandma's perfume on the other, which one, where's the... Where, where are they going to meet? Okay, which one's faster? We're going to be doing this in a straw, so you'll actually be get able to see this. We're going to do ammonia versus hydrochloric acid, and where it meets, it makes a white ring of ammonium chloride. And we'll be 
um, doing this lab. The n one of the other laws is Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now this one to me is a duh law. That's why the dunce. It's like if I was alive then and could have got credit for this law, oh my heaven, that would have been just great. I call it the duh law because it basically says the pressure total is equal to all the little parts. Play it pressure one plus pressure two plus pressure three. Da, da, da. Okay, well duh. If you add up all the little parts, it equals the total. Okay, but we use this law when we collect gas over water so we can get the pressure of the dry gas. So the total pressure is equal to the dry gas plus the water pressure. Or if we're usually trying to find the dry gas pressure, um, it's the dry gas pressure is equal to total pressure minus the pressure of the water. Now, we'll have to look it up on a chart. We don't have books. We used to have books. We don't have books. So we'll have to look it on a chart or up online. We can look at pressure of the water. So let's think about this. This is an easy... Okay, so if I put my finger here, sorry, if I hold pre if I hold temperature constant, that means like putting my finger here on this card. Then if pressure goes up, volume goes down. Okay, so wherever I want to hold constant, I put my finger there, and then I tilt the rest of it. So if volume goes up, holding still temperature still, pressure goes down. Okay. If I held it somewhere else, like volume here, if pressure went up, temperature would go up. If I held it constant here, again, volume, if pressure goes down, temperature goes down. If I held pressure constant, then when temperature goes up, volume goes up. You see how this works? Makes it really easy. So when I get to the end, if I know what I'm held to constant, Boyle's, remember, temperature, Charles, remember, or Charles, remember, pressure, and Gala sucks, remember, volume. Then I just put my finger where what's hold, well, it's held constant and if my temperature went up then my volume better have gone up. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. Okay, so here is your question. Let me move this up so you can see the whole question. It's a quiz. Oh my gosh. In the notes? Yep. Alright, so your pressure one is one atmosphere. Your temperature one is 27 degrees. Your temperature two is 927 degrees Celsius. What's your pressure 2 going to be? Okay, don't worry about this other. I just want to do the first one. Just the first one. Give me your an answer, and that's the end of notes for today.